Former Tottenham and PSG manager Maurizio Pochettino is officially the front runner for the new Chelsea job. The job has kind of been one of a poison chalice as of late in the fact that you have the likes of Graham Potter, who's been sacked, obviously. Thomas Tuchel got sacked after 300 mil or so spent in the summer transfer window. And now Frank Lampard is there as caretaker manager, and it doesn't seem like it's going to last past this season, um, rightfully so, I would say. But at the end of the day, Maurizio Pochettino at Chelsea, it's happening, more than likely. And really, what can we kind of make of this? Pochettino has a history, a bit of a legacy of being a quote-unquote project manager. Someone who's there to come in and effectively develop a squad, uh, kind of cycle through some old players, bring in some new players who are maybe a little unknown, who can, or young, have a lot of potential, who can help the team kind of grow. And ultimately, that's what Bowley's kind of envisioned for Chelsea from the jump. Thomas Tuchel, I mean, Champions League winning manager with Chelsea, has managed the likes of Dortmund, PSG now, uh, is managing Bayern, is a world-class coach, in my opinion. And I feel like he would have been a perfect fit to manage Chelsea all throughout this season, as long as Todd Bowley had, you know, kind of supplemented him with the appropriate players and personnel that he required, which clearly didn't seem to be an issue, but it did seem like there was a clash between the board of Chelsea and the management. We've heard stories of, you know, certain players coming in um, at the end of the summer. Thomas Tuchel brought in uh, Pierre-Amic Aubameyang, and a lot of people were like, well, that's clearly a Thomas Tuchel signing. And then Tuchel gets sacked, Potter comes in, and Aubameyang barely gets any game time. Um, Ultimately, there's players who, you know, you could tell were Potter signings as well. Once Potter came in and he got his January window. Um, Mark Cucurella, for example, 50 mil from Brighton, came along with Potter. And, you know, you could think what you will of Cucurella. I don't personally rate him all that much, especially as a center back in the way that Potter had been utilizing him as of late. But the message is clear to me in the fact that Chelsea is kind of aimlessly wandering for somebody who will kind of sync up with Bowley, be happy with the types of players that Bowley wishes to bring to the club, and will also be able to get the best out of the current set of players. Now, before we get into how Pochettino kind of sets up with Chelsea and the kind of um, potential players that might come as a result or the sort of impact he has and his kind of personality will have on the club we have to look at the fact that Chelsea currently has a lot of players that are going to be kind of cleared out in the summertime I mean Hakim Ziyech in January was set to go to PSG there was some sort of error on deadline day resulting in him not leaving kind of a dumb move in my opinion because you know as good of a player as I think Ziyech is it's kind of like if you're a club like Chelsea who has a lot of incoming players you need to be clearing players off your books as quickly as possible and that doesn't seem to have been the case as of late so it seems like there's going to be a summer fire so um ultimately the types of players and the personnel that I see leaving Chelsea in the summer more than likely are like Pulisic maybe Mason Mount there's been reports that there's been positive talk with Todd Bowley and Mason Mount to have him stay on the club for an extended period of time past next summer. So that's when his contract expires and he would be able to leave as a free agent. But Bowley has made it clear to Mason Mount that he wants him to stay and he wants him to extend. So Mason Mount is up in the air, but Pulisic definitely probably leaving. Ziyech probably leaving. Mount is a question mark. Um, I could see Mendy leaving. I mean, Mendy hardly gets game time. Uh, Kepa has the number one spot as of right now. Uh, it makes sense. And I feel like a few players that would surprise people if they did leave um, are the likes of maybe Raheem Sterling, uh, Kalito Koulibaly, players who have came in within the last year 
to Chelsea. And I feel like ultimately there is some sort of level of disconnect between the board and the players and the backroom staff that will cause some players to move on. Sterling and Koulibaly, I would say, are towards the top of that list. Um, Gallagher, Connor Gallagher, um, does he leave? Who knows? Um, he would be a smart player for them to keep because he's homegrown, you know, he's part of their academy. He's, you know, a midfielder who could kind of help them with squad rotation quite a bit. Um, I don't think he starts um, for Chelsea at any point um, unless there's kind of like a season like this where it's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of managers coming in, trying a bunch of different things. But as a nailed on starter, I really don't see Gallagher being that. Then obviously you have the likes of Romelu Lukaku coming in uh, back from loan. You have uh, Bakayoko coming back from loan. Um, Levi Colwell was rumored to be leaving, but apparently Chelsea has made it clear that they want him to be on board for this project and for the club's future moving forward. So it's probably going to be, I mean, I could just sit here and ramble on about all the players that got to leave, that might leave, and we'll be here for days. There's going to be probably 10 to 15 departures from Chelsea in the summer, just based on the fact that the squad alone is so gargantuan and the fact that any manager coming into a club will want to have at least a handful of signings that they could bring in to kind of make the club their own and rebuild the club in their own image. And with Pochettino, I think somebody to look out for, honestly, there's been some rumors and who knows, it could just be all smoke and mirrors, but I do think that Harry Kane is somebody to look out for. I mean, with the implosion at Tottenham recently, you know, um, which I will get into in another video very shortly, Harry Kane is a player that could quite frankly just sort of decide, you know, I'm I'm done here at Tottenham, and I had some of my best years playing under Pochettino, and he could see that Chelsea is a club that is really just missing a number nine and some players here and there to kind of provide some more stability and they could be right back in the top four and potentially title race. Um, so ultimately, Harry Kane's a player I could see being a huge kind of asset for them to go after. There's a ton of young players that are kind of coming through the ranks uh, that Chelsea have kept an eye on. Um, but there's going to be a lot of rumors as to who Pochettino brings in, who he decides to cut, but Pochettino is very much a manager who, in theory, should work. But ultimately, with the way that modern football operates, you just never know. And especially in the Premier League, with so many players and managers who have came to the league since Pochettino has left. I mean, you have the likes of Emery here now, uh, Lopetegui, who's not doing so hot at Wolves, but he's there now. World-class managers are constantly linked to the Premier League. Who knows where Nagelsmann goes? Maybe a Nagelsmann decides to go to Tottenham, which would kind of, I think, surprise a lot of people. But there is a lot on the line for both Pochettino and Chelsea. I feel as if Pochettino fails at Chelsea, there might even be an era of, you know, it wasn't his fault. You know, he came in, um, admittedly, he will have the advantage of being a manager who has a preseason uh, you know, a whole summer transfer window, the exact profile players coming in that he would prefer. And the likes of, I mean, Thomas Tuchel got sacked, so he didn't get to prove it. Potter didn't get it. Uh, Frank Lampard's coming into a mess. Um, and he ha had a horrible season with Everton. And so there's just a lot of question marks around this move. Ultimately, I think Pochettino is a good manager. And I think that he can bring out some quality within a lot of these Chelsea players. But the key issue here is that Todd Bowley and the consortium that had bought Chelsea and now operates Chelsea, they have a lot of differing ideas and a lot of kind of uncertainty that they bring to the club. Ultimately, they're at a point where they want immediate success. Um, there's tons of rumors that have came out about their interpretation the way that European footy works and it seems to be very kind of blindsided and very kind of opaque to say the least. I mean, 
they weren't even aware that Chelsea wouldn't even be in the prim, uh, the Champions League potentially next season because of their league table position. And quite frankly, not knowing that is just, it's a little dumb. I mean, the, you should probably know that, you know, you need to be top four. And they assumed apparently, allegedly, according to some reports, that, you know, Chelsea deserves to be in the Champions League. And they always are in the Champions League. But ultimately, Champions League is a meritocracy. And I feel like if Pochettino could bring in a solid number nine and some players who he thinks are required to play in his system and to help Chelsea find a certain level of stability, then he'll be good. But if Todd Bowley and Clear Lake kind of decide, hey, we're going to bring in this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and you get, say, Harry Kane, maybe Harry Kane works. And maybe it helps Chelsea to an extent. But with the way that they've been so kind of scattershot and just relentless in their financial approach since taking over Chelsea, there's a lot of uncertainty in this. And I feel like at the end of the day, Pochettino has less to lose from taking this Chelsea job where at the end of the day, he could always kind of just shift the blame to, well, I didn't want to sign that guy. Todd Bowley and Clear Lake did, if that's the kind of mentality that they continue to use under Pochettino. But ultimately, I don't know if it's the best fit. I would have gone for somebody like Enrique, potentially Nagelsmann. I mean, he's apparently pulled out. I would have tried to see if like Simeone or maybe even Mourinho would be interested. Pochettino is giving me a bit of uh, Andres Villas Boas type of vibe here. Maybe I'm reading too deep into it, but ultimately we shall see next season. So if you liked the video, please like, subscribe, tell me what you think about Mauricio Pochettino joining Tottenham. And I'm Sideline Sato. See you in the next video.